a quick log here, another over there. Oh no, uh, which one was that again? Hey, welcome to Drowsy Fox. I often use debug.log to have a quick peek into how my code works without running the full debugger. It's something that I used often in web dev and carried over to my game development approach. The main problem with debug.log is that if you don't clean up after yourself, your console becomes less than helpful. Today I'll show you how I manage my debug.logs better by using a wrapper function that can be called from any Unity class. We will take this boring looking console and turn it into this. We'll also make sure that if we click on any of the logs, the object we logged will get highlighted in the editor. That will be super useful. So let's get started. First we'll do a quick menu pass on organizing our logs. We can add a word to identify where the log came from, like the name of the game object. As you can see, now the cube script prints out the word cube and we can filter by it. But that's a lot of manual work for each quick log and it can often get out of sync. Say if we put a cube script on an object named sphere, it will print out cube even though it's on a sphere object. So let's automate this. First step is making a static class. This will hold our helper and extension functions. I'll make a folder called utils and a file inside of it called drowsy logger. Inside of this file, we'll make our first extension method and we will extend Unity's base class called object. This will allow us to use the function from any class that extends object such as mono behavior and scriptable objects. All right, let's use it now. Simply type this.log instead of the previous debug.log. I'll go ahead and repeat this for the rest of the debug.log call sites. Now, if we go back to Unity and run the project, you'll see that we automatically have the right game object name in the console. Let's add a string input so we can actually log something. Simply add another parameter. I'll call this one message. and make sure to update your prior usages and provide a new string input. Sweet, now we have a string message and we can automatically know which game object it came from. Sometimes, however, you want to print out something that's not explicitly a string, like it transforms position. So let's change the message param from a string only to a C-sharp object. Now we can provide any input and it will automatically attempt to convert it to a string and log it. Awesome, it worked. Let's now surround our logic with an if Unity editor statement, so our logs would only show when we're using the editor and not on our production build. Let's take this a step further and add another type of log option, log error. Since we'll be reusing a lot of the prior logic, let's refactor our code a bit and move our logic to a new function called do log. We don't want any other class using this function, so we're going to make it private. To start off, it will take three parameters, a Unity base object, a prefix string, and an object to serve as the login message. We'll move our logic there and add our prefix into the template string of the log. Then we can call this method from both the regular log function and log error with the proper parameters. I changed the parameter order in the do log function to an order that makes a bit more sense and updated its call sites. I'll go ahead and also add in a log warning. When we use log error and log warning, ideally we'll use the respective variations from the debug class. To do this with our extension method, I'll add an action as a parameter, which will provide with the proper logging method from the debug class. I'll also go ahead and surround the object's name with brackets for clearer formatting and give it a light blue color. Now let's go ahead and add some example calls for warning and error messages in our other classes. As you can see now the result is in the console. Most of the emojis unfortunately do not work in the console, so we'll go ahead and change the error emoji to red exclamation mark. Let's now add another function, one for successful operations called log success and fill in the proper parameters. There we go. All logs successfully printing out in the console and easily distinguishable. Now that they look better, let's make these logs even more useful. We'll add a context object to the login function as a second parameter, adding another expected parameter to the login action. This one will be a Unity object. Now whenever we click on the log in the console, it will highlight the game object that triggered it in the editor. Alright, time for the last upgrade. We'll add the ability to provide multiple messages to each log. Instead of expecting a single message object, let's add a keyword params and change object to an array. This will allow us to add an additional variable number of message parameters directly into the method. Repeat it for all the log functions. Let's combine all the messages into one string using the join method. I'll add a semicolon as a separator, but pick whichever one you want. 
As you can see, now we can provide any number of parameters into our login functions. Time for a bonus function. We'll add an extension for the string type that would return the same string, but with color tags. Super simple and super useful. Now we can use dot color on any string we want to color differently in our console. And this is it. You can keep on improving this if you'd like. Now this is of course just some basic modifications. There are some other login systems in the asset store that you can check out. I'll link them below. But this should be a nice upgrade on top of the original login system. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you found this video helpful and if you did, please drop a like down below and subscribe for more videos.